In today's rough and tumble world of politics, is there anything we can do that really matters? Can we change this world? It seems unimaginable, but schools wrestle with who can walk into which bathroom. Bakers, flower shops, and photographers are told by the state how they must run their businesses. Ever higher taxes and fees, and the fees are really more taxes, threaten to crush the dreams of too many Colorado families. In some ways, our culture is upside down. What can be done? A lot can be done. You can change your world. You can change our world. But you have to know where to start. We can help. And it's not complicated. When it comes to putting a positive push to our culture, a great deal of it starts with your local political scene. All across Colorado, precinct caucuses will be held this year on Tuesday evening, March 6th. You can change our world. Let's get started. We the people, we the neighborhoods, we your next door neighbor can have a role in government and participate in the caucus system. Don't miss it. The caucuses are an exciting experience, a meaningful experience. Our precinct and that history of the precinct had never had more than 19 people ever show up. Well, from my church, I brought 77 people. All these other people that decided they weren't going to come or didn't have any interest don't have any say. And here it is, me, relatively new to Colorado, I have a lot of say. And I think it's a really good opportunity for me to learn about who I can vote for, what my options are. Uh, and get involved in the political process a bit more. I hope you take fullest advantage of Colorado's wonderful political party precinct caucus system. Hi, I'm Kevin Lundberg. I've been in the legislature since 2003 and I'm running for state treasurer. But for me, it all started in my local precinct caucus way back in 1972. In Colorado, the key to having a positive effect on our government is through the caucus and assembly system. Over the next few minutes, I'd like to introduce you to some friends of mine who know how important it is to get involved. Because we're surrounded by 24-7, 365 national news. And as a result, we think in big terms and we think of what's going on at the federal legislature, what Mitch McConnell needs to do, what the president should do, what the Supreme Court should do. And thinking that way, we miss really the opportunities here. And if I can take you back to the American Revolution, you look at the first four battles of the American Revolution, Lexington, Concord, Road to Boston, and Bunker Hill. Nobody contacted the National Commander-in-Chief George Washington and said, hey, what do you want us to do here? Everybody said, it's my community, I'll take care of it. So with Lexington, the Battle of Lexington was a pastor, Jonas Clark, popping up and saying, I got 70 guys in my church, we'll go face the 700 British. The Battle of Concord was the Reverend William Emerson said, got it, 300 guys, we'll meet them at the bridge. The road back to Boston, same thing, Bunker Hill, same thing. It was all local people, and, and the way we won the American Revolution was not by a national strategy, because we won all the local areas. That's exactly the way politics works. When you come from the bottom up is when you get healthiest. Somebody ran for school board and chose the textbooks that told our children about America, whether it's an evil place or whether not it's a good place, whether or not there's a job, uh, there are factories looking for a place to locate, is there enough water, is there enough purification for that factory to locate there, and they go from city to city. Someone has to decide that, and if a person is not involved in their community, if they're not involved in their city, if they're not involved in their school, then decisions are made that will absolutely destroy a town or destroy a school or destroy the future. Same applies on the state level. Uh, in the state of Texas, we have been a red state now, a conservative state for a number of years, after having been a blue state with Democrat liberal leadership for 130 years. It took us two or three cycles to do it, but we focused at the precinct level. We weren't running statewide candidates. We were running precinct level candidates. And then I became part of the state leadership purely as a result of conservatives getting involved. Then when people like me became the state leadership, we had different kind of candidates we could recruit, that we could fund, different messages we put out. And we took the state for the first time in 130 years. We thought, wow, we, we got statewide level stuff. Yeah, we did because we won the precinct level stuff. And so what we did, in my case, I was one of the precinct leaders. We had to take over our precinct. Uh, our precinct and that history of the precinct had never had more than 19 people ever show up. Well, from my church, I brought 77 people. 
we suddenly own the precinct. We voted ourselves to be delegates. We went to the convention. We chose the right people. And that's exactly how you take it. And that's, that's what the story of history is. So you look really at the local level. You and I decide on caucus night whether or not we care or we don't care. And it's only a handful of people that really make that difference and say, I care enough to show up and support someone like myself or someone else who believes as I do that that person should be on city council. That person should be my state representative. That person should be on my school board. Local victories are a lot easier than we think they are uh, because having a national news media, we think of in terms of millions of votes or hundreds of thousands of votes. And uh, I'll go back to something that happened in, in the latter part of Obama's administration. Um, we had literally a school board in Fort Worth, Texas that said, hey, let's have one bathroom and one locker room for everybody. We don't need genders anymore. Now, Fort Worth, Texas is, that's a red state and generally a red city. And we're looking at the school board and, and saying, how did you do that? And what happened was in the state of Texas, Fort Worth has got about 150,000 people in the city. We looked at the president of the school board who got elected with 1,132 votes out of 150,000. We said, are you kidding? And so we said, well, let's take him out. And we looked and found in his district one Hispanic church alone that was evangelical, that was conservative, that believed you do have genders, they had more than 3,000 adults in their one congregation. So one congregation is able to take out a, a guy that needs to be taken. I mean, we had that capability, that capacity. Now, what's interesting is President Obama took essentially the Fort Worth policy and made that the national policy. So he comes back out to the Department of Education and says, hey, if you get federal funds, we're just going to have one locker room and one bathroom. And so that's what he tried to impose on all the schools in the nation that got federal funds. And across the nation, people were rising up saying, no, we're not going to. And there was a great lady in northwestern Arkansas, a Christian lady, said, no, no, no. No, we're not having one bathroom and one locker room. They're genders. And we're not putting young girls in with older guys. And, and so she ran for school board, and, and, her, and her town had 40,000 people. She ran for school board, and she got elected with a total of only 35 votes being cast in the election. She received 35 votes and won the election. Now I can take you to a Midwestern state where the same thing happened. A pig farmer said, uh-uh, not doing this. I'm running for school board, and he did. And he got busy on election day and ended up not voting. He got busy with, with the farm. And it's not that he lost by one vote. It's that nobody at all voted in the school board election. Had he voted, he would have been the entire school board by himself. Nobody voted in the entire election. And say so we, we look at presidential races where Hillary had 66 million and Trump had 64 million. We think, man, that's a lot of votes. No, look at the local level where that is so much easier and, and state with caucuses, with primaries, with precincts, however states run, it is so much easier to get involved at the lowest levels and have the greatest impact because instead of having 64 or 66 million people vote, you've only got a couple hundred or a couple thousand and therefore one person showing up among a couple hundred, that's a huge deal. One person showing up with 64 million, that's not that big a deal. But when you move it down to the local level, that's where you have a huge impact. And whether that's on school board, whether that's in party activism with caucuses and showing up at, at conventions, it's huge stuff. It doesn't take many people to swing the entire state when you show up at the local level. If something's going to happen in our town or in our community, someone who cares about our future has to take at least one night or maybe a year or two to be willing to serve on city council, to be willing to serve on the school board, to be willing to go to the legislature. That's what built America. One person in three, in some time during their lifetime, will hold a position of public trust. That should be you and me. If we don't, the people that may do that to us may ruin this last best hope of mankind, but we won't let that happen. So we're going to do what's right. We're going to get involved. It really isn't that complicated or overwhelming, but to make a difference, it does take a commitment to show up. So that's the first step. You can be that difference if you show up and if you stand up. In our next segment, we are going to drill down a bit deeper into the unique opportunities we have here in Colorado. Our caucus and assembly system 
gives the average citizen the greatest access to the ground floor of what ultimately affects us in our government. When we moved to Colorado in 92, 1992, uh, we moved from California, one of the mass groups that came. And uh, I had never been involved in politics in any way, uh, never been really interested in it. Uh, always been angry with what happened, but I never took, a, took an active role. There was no incentive. There was no incentive for me to try to even vote. I'm only one vote out of, say, 250,000 people in that particular assembly district. And uh, I didn't think I could make a difference. Nor would I even want to donate to a candidate because I thought I couldn't make a difference. I'd just leave it to the big money people. You know, and I didn't. So I wasn't really engaged in the political system at all. Although when it came time to vote, I tried to vote as best I could in a conservative manner. So then I come to Colorado, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm becoming aware that I might even have a voice um, in, in Colorado politics in some, some way. <clears throat> and uh, so then comes in a, an election cycle, and I thought, okay, gee, they have a caucus system. What is a caucus system? I didn't even know. Never heard the word before. It's interesting that not very many people even knew about a caucus here in Colorado Springs. And I was kind of disheartened a little bit because I thought, well, if it looked like it might be a good system. Why aren't we involved? Well, you know, all these other people that decided they weren't going to come or didn't have any interest don't have any say. And here it is, me, relatively new to Colorado Springs, I have a lot of say. And so that, to me, that was a real advantage to being a part of a caucus. The, the Colorado caucus is a beautiful thing. It's a reflection of the way a republic is supposed to be run. It's you choosing your representatives or becoming a representative. And um, the thought of having, as the chairman of Boulder County, I realized that if I had precinct committee people who did what they were designed to do to actually be a good neighbor and go to talk to their friends and and promote the good candidates and um, and get them out to vote. I honestly believe that we could turn this county red in a matter of a decade just by having dedicated precinct committee people who would go on to state and choose good candidates and go on to uh, be a part of the Republican Party um, organization trying to raise funds and raise awareness of our platform. Our platform is a direct uh, replica of the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. It's, it's all about life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and um, it's a beautiful thing, and, and it's wonderful to be able to take advantage of that opportunity. You just have to show up. I mean, it's two hours of one time every two years. And you get to meet your neighbors, you meet the ones that are dedicated to be Republicans, and then you build the, the, you build the um, community with those people. And that's how you build the party. That's how you build awareness of, of the beautiful thing that the Republic is. The caucus and assembly system is not just party politics. It's the essence of our Republic. It's how individual citizens, just like you, choose the people who will represent all of us. You know, a lot of people of strong convictions, political, economic, spiritual, people who believe deeply in this country as a nation under God, and our constitutional form of government as Americans, as a free people, get so discouraged with the grubbiness of the political process that they're tempted to drop out and be spectators and stand on the sidelines. Or if they're involved politically, some of them say, neither political party really expresses my beliefs and convictions anymore. I'm gonna be unaffiliated. I just don't think we can afford that. As a conservative, as a Christian, I try to live by the Constitution and by the Bible. I bet you do too. We have got to be involved. Civic engagement is not optional. We have a vested interest in getting involved in politics. As uh, Bastiat said, either you're one of, you get involved in politics for two reasons. 
either you want to partake in the plunder or you want to stop the plunder. And so we've had a lot of plunder partakers involved in politics for a long time, but uh, we need to get more Republicans trying to save the Republic. I got to Colorado in the mid-1970s as a battered young refugee from Nixon's White House staff, and the Watergate scandal had us all pretty demoralized and pretty cynical. It turned around for me when friends said, hey, John, get involved in your local precinct caucus. I'd grown up in Missouri and Illinois where the caucus system doesn't prevail. I was astounded to learn that there's a neighborhood meeting in the early spring every other year here in Colorado where people in the Republican or Democratic Party can get together in little groups of a dozen or in years of high interest, a several dozen, hash out who will be their local precinct leader, have a little election for that, hear the messages of people who want their support in the upcoming party nominating process. That's happening here in a few weeks in early 2018, and I'm excited about being involved in it for, gosh, I've lost count, must be 20 times because I've been at it almost 40 years here in Colorado. Don't miss the caucus process. Some years it's a lively expression of people's preference for president, other years, it comes right down to the grassroots. Constitutional offices in Colorado are up this year, governor, state treasurer, attorney general, secretary of state. Some years, it's every year, really, it's about who will represent you in the state senator, the state house of representatives, who's going to be your county commissioner. Don't miss it. The caucuses are an exciting experience, a meaningful experience. For me, they were the beginning step on a ladder that led to the honor of running for governor as a Republican nominee. And not making at that time, but ultimately the great honor of being in the Colorado Senate for several years, representing the same neighbors that I used to sit down and caucus with. I hope you take fullest advantage of Colorado's wonderful political party precinct caucus system. I have been involved politically um, at the local level when I was the Weld County Chair. I was also at the state level um, and can't tell you how much and how important it is to continue with the caucus systems. I love our neighborhood caucus system. It's first and foremost the best way to go to meet your neighbors, to talk about politics in a really great environment that everybody is open to discuss all kinds of views. Now granted they're either Republican or Democrat, um, but it brings everyone together. I remember my first caucus when I had uh, an older couple invite me there. I had no idea what it was. And I went and I was completely embraced by people who wanted me to be a delegate and express some of my thoughts to others. It, it was wonderful. It was very inspiring. And I came back to my family and told them such. And, and now my kids help me run caucuses, you know, be very much a part of it. And they get to see the American Republic system move along right from the grassroots. It's because you don't have that smoke-filled room of the wealthy wealthy um, deciding who's going to lead our country and um, our founding fathers knew that that could happen and that's why we created the caucus system so we the people we the neighborhoods we your next door neighbor can have a role in government and participate in the caucus system millennials need to be engaged in the caucus system because the caucuses help shape our elections and our elected officials make a big difference in the future if you want to be involved in what the future of your country and your state look like, you have to be involved today. There's a really big value to a, a small setting in which you discuss politics with small amounts of people who are from your county and uh, they might not share your political views but they do share your community with you and it's uh, really valuable to get together with those people, talk about your candidates, talk about the political opinions and, and network in that way. When you get to the ballot in November, you typically only have two real choices left. In order to make the biggest impact on who your elected officials will be, you have to start at the very beginning. That will give you the most choices and the opportunity to make the biggest impact on who your elected officials will be. I would urge everybody to get out and go to their caucuses and get involved, learn about the candidates that are going to be uh, in, the, in the elections and to uh, vote accordingly. So let's review. The caucus and assembly system is the first step in selecting our elected leaders. On Tuesday night, March 6th, caucuses will be held all across Colorado. 
A core function of the caucus is to select delegates to the assemblies that will be held over the following weeks. At the assemblies, candidates are elected to be on the primary ballot in June. It is also possible to get on the primary ballot by collecting enough signatures on petitions, but most primary candidates are selected at the assemblies. Other actions at the precinct caucuses include straw polls, discussion of current issues, appointment of precinct leadership, and submission of resolutions for consideration at the assemblies. From county to county, there are some minor differences in the procedure and structure for caucuses and assemblies. But what we have presented here should be common for all caucuses in Colorado. As I mentioned earlier, I am running for state treasurer and I will be asking the Republican State Assembly to place me on the primary ballot. This is a very competitive race. To be successful, I need your help. First, commit to attend your caucus and bring somebody with you. Second, please contact me today so we can get some more information to you for your caucus. Finally, my biggest need at this point is identifying who will be with me at the Republican State Assembly on April 14th. If you are interested in helping in any way, please go to my website and join the team. We need an army of volunteers to accomplish this big task. Let's show up and let's stand up together.